What's the worst financial decision you've ever made? On my 18th birthday, I stopped by a store and bought my first lottery ticket for $1 and scratched it off. I won $5. That feeling of winning and being ahead was quite lovely, but I knew that the only way I could stay ahead was never to play the lottery again for the rest of my life, and be happy with that extra $4 or play the lottery more until someday I won a bigger prize. I've spent hundreds of dollars since then on lottery tickets chasing plan B. A good family friend of mine used to buy $5 worth of scratch tickets and buy more with the money he made off the tickets. He'd sit in the parking lot for an afternoon just scratching M. When I bought my first new car many years ago, I used a cash advance from my credit card to make the down payment. Man that was dumb buying a money pit house it was architecturally interesting and loaded with character but in constant need of expensive repairs as is often the case with older homes it seems as though the house owned us instead of the other way around this is what tv home flipping shows are doing to innocent people that stuff isn't easy or cheap or fast my wife and i bought our first home in mid 2007 the economy collapsed about six months later Immediately lost about $50k in about a week. Bought mine in March 2007. I'm now selling it for exactly what I paid for it back then. Adding alcohol into most of my social activities. It can really really add up especially when you are not buying alcohol from a store. Fun fact. If you go out to a bar with friends who are drinking. But order non-alcoholic drinks. Soda especially, many bars will give you the drinks for free since they assume you're designated driver. Taking loans out for college, and more specifically, brushing smaller grants and scholarships aside because they weren't the big full ride. Now that I'm paying them back, I would happily take a free $500. Currently in college, I think you might have just changed my mind about scholarships. When I was 16 years old a guy ran a red light and hit me hard from the side. The worst financial advice I took was from my father who told me not to get a lawyer and to just take the settlement from his insurance company. Looking back now, I think he was just lazy and didn't want to drive me to the courthouse because it would be an inconvenience on him for an unknown period of time. Once in a moment of weakness I bought a year's subscription to an adult dating site. That was a regrettable and embarrassing choice. I got married, bought a house in both our names but the mortgage in mine only due to mortgage approval reasons. Got divorced 6 months later when I lost my job and she found someone else she wanted to be with. Got stuck with all the bills for the house and then was forced to pay my ex-wife to approve selling the house at a loss. Drained all savings, maxed all credit cards and had to move in with my parents to survive. My credit score survived though, barely. But the mortgage in mine only due to mortgage approval reasons. Now you know why. My mistake was twofold. I didn't go into the military when I graduated high school in 2005. Instead I went to college and got a degree that would make my parents happy but wasn't the degree I wanted. After that I went to grad school and doubled down on the field of study I was in. Graduated grad school with 5 figures in student debt. Couldn't find a good paying job for 4 years and fell behind on my payments so now I have 6 figures in debt. I ended up in a job in a state school system so I can have my debt eliminated in 8 years due to PSLF and I can am planning to get an MBA in the next few years because I'm allowed so many free classes in the school system every year. Once I have my loans forgiven, I'm vested in the pension system, and have my MBA with decent work experience, I'll be 40, but free to chase better career opportunities and completely debt free. I had to get my appendix removed as a kid as my parents gave me 100 pounds to buy toys, and like the stupid shithead kid I was I went and bought 100 pounds worth of junk toys instead of a Game Boy SP. Oof, that's rough. <laughs> Student loan. I could have had a 7 year crack addiction and come out financially ahead of studying for 3 years then working for 4 in my field. <laughs> Getting a personal loan. I was getting married and needed a buffer as I was still starting my career. 5k at 23% interest and still paying it 4 years later. Not sure if this counts but, I'm pregnant and during the worst of my morning sickness, 
puking 6-7 times a day, couldn't keep water down, unable to get out of bed, didn't eat for a week, I lost my job for attendance reasons, decided to just live off my savings until I was feeling better, now, I'm 6 months pregnant, down to my last $80, went to a few job interviews but didn't get them. I'm assuming it's because I'm visibly pregnant and who wants to hire someone who will need time off in a few months. If I could, I'd go back in time and try to get FMLA the day I found out I was pregnant. So now I'm broke and stressed and don't know what the frick to do. Living with my ex that was not facing or dealing with his alcohol and drug addiction. He was beautiful and good at being charming. I was dumb f. After I ended it after way too long, 2 years of BS. I was lucky enough to move back in with my dad to get back on my feet. Now I don't trust charming men. As a charming man, I felt slightly insulted. I bought a used luxury car because I was in love with the brand and like an idiot I saved up to buy the dang thing in full. I've had it for 3 years and what I've spent and repairs and the cost of buying the car I could have had a brand new 2018 Honda CRV completely paid off. My grandpa was a mechanic. And is the only reason I didn't make that same mistake. I took him with me to get my first car. I saw a really nice, dang good condition Audi A4 that was at the very upper limit of my price range. It was 9 years old. He wouldn't even look at the engine bay. If you can't afford a new import, you sure as frick all can't afford an old one. A. Fricking. Fur. Suit. I regret it fully. That and the PS Vita. That thing isn't really as great as I thought it was when it was releasing. Oh well haha. Wear the fursuit and use it to start a clown service for kids birthday parties. Or use it as a disguise for intimidation while mugging people or robbing stores. Quitting my most recent job. It paid $16 an hour. Had decent benefits and was a decent company. But something about the environment at the job messed both me and my boyfriend up. He also worked there. He got sick to the point he couldn't go in and had to quit. I kept going for a while, but I would cry the day before a shift, cry as I reached work, cry on my breaks. Sometimes I would come home early if I had any PTO and I would cry some more. It got to the point where I couldn't even force myself to get out of my car once I got to the building. I don't know why I couldn't do it. I had just left another tech job but I just couldn't. That doesn't sound like a bad decision. It sounds like you did the best you could for your own mental health. Continuing to rent when I should have bought a home in my area years ago. Now the housing prices are through the roof and I've been priced out. Putting my dog down instead of paying for surgery. I could have financed it with debt but I wasn't in a financial place to do that. It was the right decision. But it was the worst because it was so dang hard. Bad random medical things happen and those things kill. It wasn't you. Loaning money to friends and family. In my life I've loaned various people approximately 7000.00. I've been repaid less than half that. Buying my wife a $25,000 car. Should have just bought her a nice newish car for 9000 or something. It's nicer than my car. What is the car? Sold company shares when I needed money for a car. 3 months later stock went up 500%. It was a pretty bad break. But it wasn't anything that broke me. I sold some company shares to fund a down payment for a house thinking I need to buy as house prices are going up in the area. They did not go up 100% in 3 months. Feel you there brother. When I turned 17 due to some unfortunate circumstances I inherited part of a trust fund that gave me an outrageous income for someone at age. I started building a ridiculous Jeep CJ8. As I was doing most of the work myself I needed something to drive in the interim that could double as a daily driver as well. A brand new Porsche 928 S4 fit the bill. By the time I started college that fall I realized what a douchebag I was because the Porsche wasn't suitable for New England winters and the Jeep would have to be shipped because it had a useful range of around 120 miles per tank. Learned an expensive lesson about depreciation when I sold the Porsche to buy a reasonable car and an even more expensive lesson about what money pits custom cars are. Spent probably thousands on Magic the Gathering cards after 2 years of playing. Financially it's dumb as heck since I'm living on ramen but I really enjoy the game so I have no regrets. 
I had a boyfriend in college who grew up poor and never knew financial responsibility. I grew up semi-wealthy but also never knew financial responsibility. We moved in together and I had a credit card and a 3000 credit line. We maxed it out and he used it to fix his bum butt truck and never paid me back. Like $600 worth of work on his truck. So here I am 4 years later still paying if off. Frick you cheapo and frick me for trying to fix PPL. Comma and frick me for trying to fix PPL. Ugh. Yes. Yes yes. It's understandable to try to an extent. But people have to know when to cut their losses. Sinking time and money in a shiftless butthole never works out well. When I was 18 I got my first credit card because every other day I was getting the crap in the mail. Without reading anything I chose one on the highest amount. 250. Not even 2 weeks later I paid 4 concert tickets for myself and 3 friends after them agree they'd pay me back. I never got the money back and because I couldn't pay back I started earning interest. An amount I don't remember but my mother called it extremely freaking high and she wasn't one to cuss. Fricked my credit for years and once I got things going good Bank of America fricked me over when they started they were going to drop the more expensive payments and make you pay for the half dozen overdrawn items instead of going by the date of the item that ended in a civil suit which got me nothing except a worse credit rating. Credit cards. Frick em. Sounds more like just bad decisions rather than credit cards. Credit cards are great to use in the place of cash as long as you have the cash in the first place. Living in the dorms. I could have lived at home and went to the same club activities I did anyway and met most of the same people while saving an embarrassing amount of money. <laughs> Buying a certified pre-owned, but basically brand new, Subaru Forester. I mentioned that I wanted an older, but still reliable, car that I knew I could afford. But my mom gasped at the idea of buying an older used car. Has a brand new is the way to go mentality. She talked me into buying a brand new car. And even still she was hesitant when I mentioned a certified pre-owned car. Even though it's a 2018. She drives a lot. And she used to have a Nissan Versa that she bought brand new. She ended up owing $7,000 more than the car was worth. And then she rolled over that $7,000 into a loan for a brand new Jeep Patriot. It wouldn't surprise me if she is now more upside down on the Patriot than what the original sticker price of the Patriot was. Her example is exactly why I didn't want to buy a brand new car. Stupid. Push over me ended buying the CPO Subaru anyway. Payments are steep. And while I can afford them, my chances of moving out or going back to school are severely hampered. While I was talked into it, I let it happen, and I've honestly regretted buying the car since I drove it off the lot. Gonna put my big boy pants on though and do whatever I can to pay off the loan, and pay it off as quickly as I can, since I have a good example of what happens when you roll over negative equity into another vehicle. Never taking car advice from my mom again though, that's for sure. I traded in a car I'd bought 2 years prior and worked perfectly, and still had warranty. For a 6 year old vehicle with no warranty, I lost a bunch of money in depreciation and the motor blew in the new car almost exactly a year later. This was 3 years ago that the motor blew and I still have 2 more years of payments. The motor is worth more than it would cost to replace the car. It's a fancy lawn ornament now. Expanding to a larger shop in 2010. Yeah this recession should be about over. Opening a second location in 2011 and splitting my core employees off to staff it. Yup recession will be over any day now. Good times coming and I'm poised to clean up. The week we opened was the week congress shut down the US economy as a negotiation tactic. The phone stopped ringing and sales plunged to 40% of YOY baseline. It took months to build back up and there was never a makeup surge in business. I never got out of debt and finally closed the second after 3 years, which was probably 2 years too late. At one point I amassed over 1 stroke 4 million in debt, much of it in unpaid taxes and penalties. Last year I finally got most of the way caught up. Lived in another city to go to auto tech school, paid both tuition and rent with student loans due to being unable to find and hold down employment. That was about a decade ago and I still have outstanding loans from that time period. Education was absolutely useless. Bought a house. I'm not a fixer upper and it's just dang expensive to maintain. I understand all the financial equity stuff but I'd rather rent and have someone come and fix stuff. 
deposit a check on my phone, cashed the same check, thought the cash in my account would not pen through, it penned it, waited a week still there, bought a PS4, two days later negative like $380 had to give my bank my next paycheck, debt gone, long story short I basically got two paychecks for the price of one, or so I thought, Moved one state over and commuted 70 miles to work for 4 years just before gas went from about $1.75 a gallon to $3.50 a gallon. For a lot of other reasons it was actually a good life choice for me, but financially I'm still digging myself out of the hole it put me in. I bought an old, used RV, when I lived in San Diego, total impulse purchase. I ended up putting about $3,000 in repairs into it right away, including fixing the roof, which included getting it to pass a smog check, then had to pay $110 a month in parking. I never ended up camping with it and sold it for $5,000 less than I bought it. Don't buy an RV. I went to Fordham to get my masters in social work. Spoiler alert. Social workers do not make Fordham tuition level money. Bought a fake ice watch off ebay, I even messaged the woman selling it and got her to admit it was fake and I didn't bother to cancel or dispute the order, it was a pretty convincing fake but stopped working pretty soon, I still get anxiety about that, also buying the matrix game on ps2. $200 on a custom boomerang, went to the field next to my high school, first throw, curved more than I anticipated, having never thrown a boomerang before in my life, and went right through the bay window facing the backyard of some poor sap's house. Never got it back. Never got another one. I bought a $900 camera with the intent to sell my $500 lens and $400 camera to make up for the cost. Got scammed by the buyer of the lens, and the person I sold the camera to broke it within the week and Amazon made me take it back. When I was 18 and a sophomore in college and with no job, I decided to use all of my savings to start my own business. Then I got an opportunity to transfer schools and had to dissolve the business. Wasted my entire savings on a business that never made a sale. Luckily I never borrowed money or went into debt. Going to college when I didn't want to, I ended up dropping out and now I'm paying off thousands of dollars. Also opening a Best Buy credit card, not a bad idea in of itself, until you see that I bought my ex a $600 computer monitor for gaming because he nearly eared it. Well now I'm paying off his stupid freaking monitor and my card is still over its 30% threshold because I can only afford to make the minimum payment a month. On my 16th birthday I bought a lottery ticket and match 5 out of 6 numbers. I didn't know about partial wins and promptly threw the ticket away because I didn't get the full match. Maybe a year later I checked the possible winnings and I could have won about $100.000. Getting into a relationship for 15 years and getting a profession that is okay as long as I'm with someone who works. But now that I'm alone that profession offers me only poverty. I should have studied for a profession with a salary big enough to support myself alone. College for a bachelor's in game development. I paid close to 80k for the degree total. 100k if you include student housing. Unity offers 12 bucks a month to teach Unity. For the cost of a Netflix subscription. Graduated and I would have a house and an active social life by now. Half my education is general education. I could be making games twice as good. But hey at least I know who Emily Dickinson is. Engagement ring. She left me for someone else the day after her mother came to town to help us look at venues. I have a happy little monthly payment to remind me of that. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Buy for now.